Hello everyone, welcome to California. I'm Andy Dillon and I'm here to tell you about some of the research that's come out of our lab, performed by Rebecca Taylor. As many of you may know, our lab works on the aging process. And there's lots of things that contribute to the aging process, such as DNA damage, micromolecular damage, and other sorts of damage that actually are inherent to the aging process. And our lab specifically works on how the proteome is actually maintained. And part of the work that we're going to tell you about today deals with the proteome of the endoplasmic reticulum. Hi, I'm Rebecca Taylor. In the Dillon lab, we use C. elegans, a microscopic nematode worm, to understand the aging process and ways that we can modulate aging. Fortunately, the worm is a really good model for studying the endoplasmic reticulum because it responds to ER stress in a way that's really very similar to humans at a cellular level. An accumulation of misfolded proteins in the ER caused by stress activates three conserved signaling pathways, which go on to regulate downstream transcriptional and other responses in ways that allow the cell to alleviate its protein misfolding problem. We study one of these pathways, which is really the conserved ancestral core of UPR signaling. Now in this pathway, an upstream activating molecule, IRE1, detects misfolded proteins in the ER lumen and goes on to activate a downstream transcription factor, XBP1, through a really unique regulated splicing event. Once it's spliced, active XBP1 goes on to regulate a range of downstream targets that include chaperone-mediated protein refolding, protein degradation, expansion of the ER, and various other mechanisms. We already know that as animals get older, they accumulate a burden of toxic and misfolded proteins. And it seems that part of the reason for this is that protective mechanisms like the UPR shut down in older individuals. So we wanted to ask whether this was true of the ER, UPR and C. elegans. So does the ability to activate the UPR change as animals get older? And we find that it does. Older animals are no longer able to activate their UPR in response to misfolded proteins. And this happens relatively early in adulthood. So in animals that are really effectively only middle-aged. And this means that these relatively young adults are already accumulating this burden of aggregated proteins. And we also found that this loss of the ability to activate the UPR in older worms leads to a loss in ER stress resistance, which is likely due to a loss in the ability to activate the XBP1 UPR transcription factor. Our next question was whether we could create worms constitutively expressing a spliced and active form of XBP1 circumventing this loss of XBP1 activation. And we found that these worms actually were more resistant to ER stress at older ages. But when we then asked whether they were resistant to aging and whether they were longer lived under normal unstressed conditions, we found that they weren't. So we started to wonder why this might be. One of the very early confounding pieces of data that Becca discovered is that when she overexpressed XBP1 in every single cell, the animals were very stress resistant, but they didn't live a long time. So we began to pull back a little bit and ask, are there individual tissues that are more beneficial for lifespan versus others? And surprisingly, what she discovered is that when she activated the XPP1 branch in the nervous system or a little bit in the intestinal cells, the animals were long lived and the muscle cells are actually short lived. So it sort of seemed like the net accumulation of expressing every single cell type didn't have an increased lifespan because some tissues gave rise to prolonged longevity signals and some tissues may actually give rise to shortening of lifespan. So it seems that expressing XBP1S just in the neurons can make animals both long-lived and stress resistant. Now that was pretty surprising. So we started to ask how activation of the UPR just in the neurons could somehow protect the whole animal. And we got our first hint of an answer when we looked at activation of the UPR across all tissues and we saw that XBP1S expression in the neurons could also activate the UPR in another tissue of the worm, the intestine. This implies that there's some kind of signaling mechanism going on that's allowing neurons to communicate UPR activation to a totally different tissue. One of the most compelling pieces of the data that came forward out of this 
is that she was able to go through and cut off the ability of the nervous system to communicate with the rest of the organism. And she found that that was not sufficient to make the animals live longer. What we found is that you need an intact UPR in the intestine, as well as the ability to secrete neurotransmitters from neurons in order to see this non-autonomous activation of the UPR and the resulting lifespan extension and stress resistance. So we need to maybe rethink the way that we've traditionally thought of the UPR, which is that it's a signaling mechanism that responds to misfolded proteins just within the cell. Because we're actually beginning to understand that organisms have the ability to coordinate their response to ER stress throughout the organism by communicating UPR activation between tissues through the release of intertissue signaling molecules from neurons. Hi, it's me again. <laughs> You're at the end of the video and I'm no longer animated. <laughs> okay, back to real life. So at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, why would one cell actually communicate to another cell about its ability to maintain its ER homeostasis? Why would this actually evolve this way? And we don't exactly know why. I think that that's open for debate. But one idea that we're thinking of is that some cells are more susceptible to ER damage than other cell types, such as the nervous system. And their job is to communicate stress. And so one idea is that maybe this ER stress has evolved to actually warn distal cells that there is ER stress coming because the nervous system feels it and it emanates the process throughout.